Hello and welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Here is the long awaited and keenly participated in review of the CZ457 long range precision rifle. This is a 2 2 rimfire and I was looking forward to shooting this gun for pretty much the most of 2020. It's, um, it's December now. I have reviewed throughout the year quite a few other precision long range 2 2 rimfire wannabes and this has turned up last. Um, you can see I'm ringing up the Schmidt and Bender scope on top, tier one rings. It's got a 25 MOA weaver rail on it, 20 inch barrel, it's fluted, it's threaded, it comes with a muzzle brake, but I've put a sound moderator on it just because I can. Simple Harris bipod, and you will also see um, it's got quite a, a large bolt knob, which is rubber, which people have commented on. But a number one thing is it's got a match chamber on it, which has got quite tight headspace. So please stick with me, watch the review. We're going to be working all the way out to 305 meters so i hope you enjoy it and thank you for your patience waiting for me to fight weather rain sun all sorts of conditions and get this done thank you please enjoy the soft touch stock is incredibly stiff it's fully stippled on the side so you get great grip on it and they wipe clean easily if you do get them muddy you can see here how the stiff forend isn't going to interrupt the barrel's harmonics from any shooting position the fluted barrel is 20 inches or 510 millimetres long and features a matched chamber for tight head spacing. The underside of the forehand is stippled and features two sling studs for bipod and sling mounting. The rifle is compatible with CZ standard 2-2 rimfire magazines and it's supplied with a 5 round polymer unit. 10 rounders are also available. The release catch on the front allows the mag to drop into your palm and 5 rounds load easily through the front of the magazine in the single column. The biggest issue you'll have is how waxy the projectiles are and whether your thumbs get really dirty and greasy. Although the SK has been quite good for that respect, it's not waxy at all, although you do get a slight greasiness on your thumb. It's worth noting that the 457 is a switch barrel rifle just like the 455 was, so you can have multiple calibers. The trigger is adjustable, it's a single stage unit, it's deeply curved as you can see for comfortable finger feel and there's plenty of space in the trigger guard. I've reviewed quite a few long range precision 2-2 rim fires and centre fires this summer. I have to say, the CZ stock is the finest of them all. It has a proper butt hook and the bag rider is a Picatinny fit so you can use a monopod if you want. It probably suits a soft rear bag better than rabbit ears and certainly not free recoil. A black and pale tan mottled finish is shown throughout and the stippling on the grip is deep and ambidextrous with a palm swell both sides. The bolt removal catch is on the left side of the rear action bridge and although it's easy to use you might need to lift the cheek piece out or drop it completely down to remove the bolt. A few people have commented that the bolt knob is actually really big but you know what it's one of the best I've ever used. The bolt is impossible to jam, feeds ammunition incredibly smoothly and if you watch me throughout the video you'll see me using various bolt operation techniques with my thumb, fingers, back of my hand, all sorts and not one time does it misfeed, miss eject or, or cause any problem whatsoever. If I was to complain about any one single negative on the whole gun, I'd probably just say that the fact that the gun needs a T25 Torx wrench to make adjustments on the stock is a slight downside, but it's hardly the end of the world. Here you can see cheek piece adjustability, it's got vertical adjustment on the, on the recoil pad and there's also rotational adjustment on the recoil pad to make sure you've got the most comfort in your shoulder pocket. Ball lift is just 60 degrees and CZ have reduced the striker weight to two thirds of its former level for less discernible feel on firing. Trigger sear engagement can be adjusted without the rifle removed from the stock. You do need to take it out to set the trigger weight and over travel. Full adjustment range is 8 to 15 newtons which is 800 to 1500 grams. My factory unit was set up at 800 grams spot on and I thought it gave great pulls. The gun was provisionally zeroed at this point with any old other 2-2 rimfire ammo I had. Now I've got the SK ammo, I want to check it with that specifically at 50 meters and get it refined for a central placement to dial further after I've chronographed and set up the ballistics. These groups were shot with the SK match ammunition, which has become my favourite round for this rifle. The hammer forged barrel has a 16 inch twist rate and is screw cut at half inch UNF. A muzzle brake is supplied, but I added a sound moderator. I 
could have chronographed hundreds of rounds of ammunition, but I'm not sure what benefit that would have been. I entered the proximate 1,070 feet per second value for the SK match ammo into my Kestrel and started work on the ballistic solutions from there. I think when you get into real conditions, you need to start keeping detailed charts, detailed tables and refining your solution because the BCs supplied by manufacturers aren't always correct. SK published muzzle velocities measured in a 26 inch barrel, although to be fair, the 20 inch unit on this CZ wasn't really lacking very much, maybe only about 10 to 20 feet per second in most scenarios. The overall length of the rifle is 1010 mm with a 3.8 kg bare weight. Length of pull is adjustable from 351 to 382 mm. Spaces are supplied. Please don't think I'm Mr. Flashman just because I've got the Schmittenbender and all the Kestrel gear. This is just other review kit that's on loan to me and I thought what a great opportunity to try it out on the CZ. I love shooting rimfire and the long range rimfire is becoming my favourite go-to element of rifle shooting. The joy of the head-up display is it fits on the side of the rifle and you can put the Kestrel itself in the vane mount to measure the predominant wind speed and direction which feeds wirelessly into the head-up display. It's, it's a lot of kit for a 2-2 rimfire but like I said I might as well use it since I've got it and I have to say it works very well but like always with any ballistic calculation tool the quality of data you enter represents the quality of data you will get back out of it and refining it is mandatory. This 150mm gong is 122 meters from the prone firing position. The clips you'll see here aren't always necessarily first round hits. These are the culmination of three days of shooting and various clips I've videoed and filmed and I was concentrating predominantly on that and noting down the corrections I was making on the day. My main interest is in vertical dispersion of different types of ammunition because the crosswind is harder to take note for. And on one of the particular days, the incoming sun was so strong I couldn't see any indication downrange, which included seeing bullet splash hitting the ground or the backstop. I couldn't even see grass or any foliage movement to indicate wind speed. The Kestrel vane mount is great, but of course it can only be measuring the wind in one position, and if it's close to you and you're sheltered from the wind, you can't see what's happening further in the distance. So, this is the 122 metre gong. Taking shots on that with it swinging, so I sort of timed it a little bit, but I wasn't getting too worried about group size. But there's quite a few overlapping shots in the group there that I shot when I waited for it to be stationary. And most of these ones here were shot when it was swinging back and forth towards me, which are in quite a pleasant sort of arc shape. I'm very happy with that. I sit here at the end of the review with a pad full of ballistic notations I've made down whilst making the video, but at this stage I was doing a lot of Arkansas elevation and Kentucky windage to guesstimate my bullet impact onto target. So don't always believe what you see on camera. Some of them are refined, some of them are a little bit ropey. I can't stand totally stage managed and scripted films that are part of a marketing ploy. I was setting up and refiring ballistics throughout the whole videoing period. I trust the Schmidt & Bender PM2 525x56 optic implicitly because I've used it on so many other rifles during review projects. It's a first focal plane and of course being able to aim off and dial off correspondingly makes setup so much easier when all you need to do is record hits and rings on steel plate. This particular plate's at 175 metres and it's a little bit heavier than the one I had at 122. So it's easier to shoot slightly better groups on. But of course, when you start getting the hits timed well, the pendulum effect just amplifies. So you're certainly never really going to worry too much about group size in these conditions. Even though I was really lucky with very low wind speeds. That rifle, it's just a delight to shoot. I test guns every day of the week and I cannot remember the last time I had a rifle with ammunition I enjoyed shooting this much. I'm gonna put a click of, uh, click right on the wind and I've run out of ammo. Time for another box, that's the first 50 rounds through it. I need to stop being nice about this gun because no one's gonna believe me. Oh, there we go. Dave throws in the box of ammo. 
Did you leave that recording, Dave? Might have. Good. <laughs> The good thing is this this uh, this plate at 175 meters is a little bit larger, a little bit heavier, and it's uh, it's not swinging as much. And I'm running five and a half milli radians for this one. So when I get home later today, I'll be noting all this down and getting the proper ballistic setup dialed in correctly. All about experimentation. Thoughts on the CZ so, so, so far? Um, well, as you probably understood from comments I may have made, I like it a lot. The stock is very comfortable. Uh, I'm going to increase the length of pull slightly on it. Recoil pad position is fine for prone. Uh, I might just pop the cheek piece up a little bit because it's quite a slim shape and it's quite nice to weld into, so I shall do that. Grip's nice, trigger's nice, bolt is fantastic. Scope mount's excellent. The fore end of the stock is stiff, it's stable, I'm not getting any intermittent contact because of you know odd barrel harmonics and I can I can you know wrench the gun around a little bit. There's no issue whatsoever in that. The butt hook on this is an excellent design because I've got a flat bottom for a soft field bag, it's perfect, it doesn't matter if it's a Picatinny rail. If you were going to use a bag rider, you'd maybe want to put a uh, a clip over that just to seal it up a bit. But the point is, because there's you know a decent amount of space here, and it's got a hook shape rather than just a, a taper, your hand locks into it, and there's plenty of space here. It doesn't specifically match on a 2-2 rimfire because recoil isn't an issue, but on the larger centrifires where there's no space here or or you know not great angle curves, it hits the back of your hand on recoil. This is an excellent stock shape, regardless of the fact it's only on a rimfire. Um, I'm, I'm massively impressed with this rifle. I am, I am so impressed with it, I actually want to keep it. Velocities um, from the barrel. These ammo types from SK, which I got yesterday, these have all been chronographed by SK in a 26 inch, um, 26 inch barrel. This is a 24 inch barrel and off the top of my head, I think they're only running about 10 feet per second off those um, stated figures. I have that all on record for later, but this is a little spontaneous bit to camera. Uh, so yes, I am so happy with this. It's fun really that I've used it with all the Kestrel gear. Uh, the Schmidt and Bender scope is, you know, it's usually the reliable thing I can always rely on. But setting up the Kestrel is great fun and I can shoot as many rounds as I like and I can test all sorts of distances and I'm going to go and do, go and do some positional shooting now and test some you know, supports like you, you, you call them barricades in PRS competition, things like that. But various supports, improvised shooting and what so forth. And I am looking forward to getting the data written down for this gun, sorting that ballistic curve out because I want to do more with it and I think I have actually got a lot of travel on the optical system with the 25 MOA uh, weaver rail that's on this gun. It's not a Picatinny rail, there is a, there is a space in the middle so that, that stops it being a true Picatinny rail, but the, the weaver at the front back is giving me loads of scope mounting and with it having 25 minutes of angle on board it's excellent for long range rim fire. Um, the scope is, you know, it's beyond doubt really for this kind of thing, it's got massive downing capability. Um, so once I get the, I had 15, I had about 15 milli radians spare beyond uh, 100 meter zero. But once I get that set up today, I'll have a better idea of exactly how much dialing capability I've got beyond. I know the velocity on the ammunition now because I've chronographed that today, and I have, um, you know, started to, to develop information for the ballistic curve to to assess the shape of it, and just to make sure that turrets and everything are dialing in collaboration. Although I have used this scope on a lot of review rifles and it's always done exactly what it needed to do correctly. So, yes, I'll say it again. I am very keen on this rifle. There we go, cut. This is the uh, 175 metre gun. You know, a bit more breeze up here. We just come out the lee of the trees. You can just feel it slightly. But I'm claiming the ones on the, the left side 
Dave's claiming the group higher here, but we shall see. Thank you for watching part one. That's initial setup covering the rifle and shots out to 175 metres. Part two will hopefully be with us on YouTube tomorrow and it covers shots from 260 out to 305 metres on a Muntjac Deer silhouette and a 200mm steel gong at 305 metres. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.